Hi, everybody, and welcome again to another OpenShift Commons briefing, this time with another new member, Bitnami, um, who's been around for a long time, but they've just joined the OpenShift Commons recently. And Adnan did a wonderful blog post on Monocular on OpenShift um, about uh, probably two months ago or so, and I read it with keen interest, because anything OpenShift always pops up on my radar, and it was very well done, and I thought that it was timely too because he talked about Helm and using Helm and Monocular and, and OpenShift. We get a lot of questions about that. So I'm going to let Adnan um, talk about using both of those things on OpenShift and introduce himself. And there'll be some Q&A in the chat that I'll try and answer. But um, we'll save most of the Q&A for the very end and um, we'll go live then at the end. So without any further ado, Adnan, thank you for joining us and take it away. Thank you for having me, Diane. Um, so hey everyone, I'm here to talk about Helm and Monocular on OpenShift. Um, and if you haven't heard of Helm, briefly, it's a uh, package manager for Kubernetes. And Monocular is kind of a counterpart in that way in that it's a web UI uh, for kind of browsing uh, Helm chart repositories. Um, so before we kind of get into that, uh, just a quick kind of background on who Bitnami are. So, if you haven't heard of us, um, our kind of main uh, kind of mission is to make applications very easy to, to use um, on any platform. So if you're, you know, we have a long history of making applications easy to install in VMs, in the cloud, um, and recently we've been doing a lot in the container, container ecosystem and Kubernetes, uh, and we've been developing some solutions. Uh, we have. Uh, a, a range of containers now for the different applications in our catalog. Um, and we've also been working on some pretty awesome tooling to, to make applications easier to run on Kubernetes. Um, so if you've heard of things like Kubeless, uh, which is the serverless uh, framework for Kubernetes, um, we've also been doing some great stuff with uh, KSonnet and kubeconfig. Uh, and we're also pretty heavily uh, involved in what's going on with Helm and um, in particular Monocular as well. Uh, so who am I? Uh, I started out at Bitnami uh, almost three years ago now, and initially doing mostly web development stuff, uh, Rails kind of stuff, and I kind of shifted over to uh, DevOps style things. So um, I think for about two years now, I've been working um, on containers and, and Kubernetes, uh, and along the way, I've become a core maintainer of um, Helm and Kubernetes charts, uh, and I've also uh, recently uh, joined the SIGAPS group, the special interest groups uh, for applications with Kubernetes, uh, and become a co-lead there. So um, if you're looking for me, I'll probably be um, somewhere around those communities, so you can probably find me there. Um, so Kubernetes resources are hard to manage. I think anyone who's used Kubernetes and has had to manage a bunch of YAML um, probably knows this. So when we started out with Helm, we wanted an easier way to manage and share these manifests, um, make it really easy for other people in my team or um, you know, even outside my team externally um, to, to pick up something and, and just use that. Um, but also you, you kind of need to tweak the definitions a bit and change um, a port here or change um, a secret or a password for different environments. Um, so that was something that wasn't very easy. You'd have to do a nasty said script in uh, Kubernetes resource to do, to do that. Uh, and you also can't easily manage the lifecycle of your application. So you can manage the state of each Kubernetes resource uh, deployment a service, but you can't manage these things as a whole. Um, so that was also kind of a, a missing uh, feature of Kubernetes. So that's kind of what brought on uh, this idea of, of Helm, which is a way of logically grouping applications uh, packages um, and kind of giving a, a package manager interface over that. So something like apt-get or yum that you may be familiar with. So packages in Helm are called charts. Uh, and these are, again, just application definitions. So they consist of uh, metadata about the chart, um, your Kubernetes definitions and resources. Uh, and there's also some configuration via the values.yaml file, which we'll see. Uh, and you can also document your chart through a readme um, and through the notes.txt, which is a, a bit of useful information that get, gets printed out after you install a chart. 
And these charts live in chart repositories, which um, are very simple um, HTTP servers that just have an index and uh, serve packaged up charts. So in this slide here, I have a, a diagram of, of what uh, a chart package actually looks like. So you can kind of see there's this templates directory where I think most of the stuff is going on. You have your uh, Kubernetes resources, your YAML files, um, and then there's some other metadata and uh, things around that. So the way Helm works is it has a in-cluster component called Tiller. And Tiller is the thing that uh, tracks the state of these applications. So it's it's uh, it's kind of an additional component on top of the on top of the Kubernetes API that um, holds the state of applications and uh, renders your charts and creates and updates resources in Kubernetes. Uh, so the Helm client uh, on your computer will connect to Tiller via gRPC, and and then Tiller will make requests to the Kubernetes API, as you can see in this diagram. Uh, so for, for Tiller to be able to go and install and update resources, it needs cluster admin access, uh, cluster admin privileges. So there's a little bit of fun that you need to do with, with RBAC permissions here to get that to work. Um, there is a question of whether Tiller really needs cluster admin privileges. So for those of you who are probably more interested in um, the uh, security uh, requirements for this, um, you might want to figure out a way to run it with less privileges. Um, but it really comes down to how you end up using Helm and Tiller. If you're using uh, Helm to create namespaces um, or doing other stuff that generally needs cluster admin privileges, then you're going to have to bump up the, the privileges. But if you're if you're able to just stick to a specific namespace and just create very few resources, um, then you don't necessarily need all those privileges. So it really depends on, on what charts you're building and what, what charts you're trying to install. Uh, so Helm is really easy to grab. You can just grab it on GitHub um, or install it with uh, with Homebrew. So if you're on a Mac, you can just do that. Um, so there's the link here for the uh, Helm releases page where you can go and grab it. And to get started, um, all you need to do is run the Helm init command. So I'll go ahead and show this. Hopefully you can all see my terminal here. Um, and I have an OpenShift cluster running using Minishift. So if I run Minishift status, you can see that's running there. And so now if I run Helm, uh, so the first thing I need to do is create a service account. So um, so I'm creating a service account in the Cube system namespace uh, and calling it Tiller. And then I'm going to go and give this uh, cluster admin access. Uh, that's not what I want to do. There we go. Um, so I'm just adding the cluster role, cluster admin to uh, the service account Tiller here. Now that I have this, I can go ahead and run, uh, sorry, Helm in it, and pass it to service account Tiller. And this will get installed in the cube system namespace. So if I take a look at what's running there, let's wait for to get them running. And now I can run Helm version, and I'm success, successfully able to connect to Tiller. Uh, so that's awesome. So now I can go and install um, a chart from the repository. So if I run Helm search here, I can see what charts I have available to me. Um, in a kind of jarring way, uh, but you can see here I have the stable repository, which is what comes baked out by de uh, by default with Helm. Um, I've also added a few other repositories. I've added the incubator repository here. Um, I've added the monocular repository, which we'll see in a moment. And I've also got this uh, to-do app that I've been working on. So I'm going to go ahead and install my to-do app. And you see that Helm has created a release for my uh, for my application, and it's called this release Jumpy Peacock. So Helm will, similar to um, Docker and all the other cool things nowadays, um, Helm comes up with a kind of fun name to to give my release if I don't give it a name myself. 
Um, it also prints out what resources are available, uh, what resources it's gone and installed. So um, my to-do application here has a service and a deployment, um, and that's kind of configured an external IP for that. And then there's this notes section, which I, I kind of briefly mentioned. Um, it's kind of like a, a way to document your chart and, and have a way to um, just provide your users some next uh, next steps to, to get them running. So I can actually just copy these commands here. And then I can go and access this in my browser. And I should be able to access my to-do app. Great, so I can add a to-do list item here. Um, and my monocular. Cool, so that's that's Helm really. Um, you can see if I run Helm list here, uh, there's a couple of commands which give me some information about the, the state of my application. So I can see that it's, again, this jumpy peacock, it's uh, revision one. This was when it was last updated. And this is the, the version of the chart it's on and which namespace it's uh, installed in. If I wanna get back um, this information at any time, I can simply run Helm status jumpy Peacock, I get all that information back, so I can always get back to that. So going back to my slides here, so we've seen that Helm makes managing and deploying Kubernetes apps uh, a lot easier. There is kind of still something missing. It's it's difficult to discover what's available. If you saw I did that Helm search command, and there was this wall of text of, of things. It wasn't really easy to, to see what was actually available. So this is where Monocular comes in. And actually what you're seeing here is the uh, public version, cubeapps.com. And let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, so cubeapps.com is, you can kind of see it as a Ruby gems or NPM JS or Docker Hub, um, but for, for Kubernetes. So all of these things, um, you know, RubyGems, NPM, they all have command line tools that um, allow you to manage the, the packages that are installed on your system. And Helm was kind of the, the equivalent of that. So there needed to be an equivalent of npmjs.org or, or RubyGems or Docker Hub. And I think this is where Monocular kind of really shines. Um, so on kubeapps.com, you can, you can go there, it's live. Um, you can see a list of all the charts that are available, and these are pulling out of the stable and incubator repositories from the uh, the official Kubernetes charts repository, uh, which you can see the source at if you go to uh, github.com slash Kubernetes charts. There we go. Um, so you see here, you have this, the stable and incubator repositories here. Uh, so I can go to any one of these charts. Let's. Uh, I can even search for stuff. So if I if I search for WordPress, for example, um, or if I search for blog, the all the different blogging platforms. If I go to WordPress, um, I can see here there's a there's the README um, and, and all the documentation about the chart. Monocular also shows me the command that I can use to install the chart, and I can see all the old versions, what what the application version is. Um, I have links here to uh, the home page of the project, the, where the source is, which is the, this is the chart source, um, who the maintainers are, and any related um, repositories or links for this chart. Down here in the readme, I can see some configuration. So Helm allows you to provide configuration by the command line, and I can um, configure any of these values if I want, or I can just leave them at the default when I go and install WordPress. Um, there's also a note here about persistence and ingress. And this is all just pulling from um, the chart repository. So if I click on here and and go to the source here, you'll see, you'll, you'll find the exact same readme. Uh, I can go back here through different versions and I can kind of see what changes were made. Um, you know, if there's anything of note in the, in the readme, I can kind of see that there. I can go back all the way to the first version at 030 and, and see how much things have changed. So the, the version on Cube Apps is kind of like a read-only version. You can't really do much else apart from copy that Helm install command and, and um, run that in, in your terminal. Um, but you can also run Monocular in cluster, and that gives you a much more um, interesting experience. So I'll just quickly go through the next few slides here. Um, so I mentioned 
that the goals of the project are mainly to facilitate facilitate the discovery of Kubernetes applications. You can also, you know, as I showed you, the two different repository there, there was the incubator repository the, and a stable repository. But um, you may also have an internal chart repository for your company um, that you may also want to add to Monocular. And if you're running this in cluster, you can aggregate and um, aggregate all your different chart repositories from different teams and have that all in one single UI. Uh, as I showed, you can easily grok changes across chart versions. And the other thing you can do if you're running in cluster is install applications with one click. So uh, we'll, see a we'll see a demo of this in a second. Um, so the way to install Monocular in your cluster, it's via chart. You saw that I had um, the Monocular repo uh, when I did Helm search. And there was a, the Monocular chart was in there. So I can go ahead and run Helm install Monocular Monocular. So if I go ahead and do this, it's... and I'm also going to pass in some configuration uh, specific to my environment on OpenShift here, and I'm also going to call this Monocular so that I can refer back to it. So again, Monocular has gone and installed this for me. And this time, um, because I specifically gave it a name, uh, Monocular, it's gone and chosen that name instead for the release. And I can see what resources and deployments and uh, other resources it's gone and created for me. And then I have my notes here, which mentions I can access it by the monocular.local. So while that's starting up, uh, I'm going to show you the configuration that I that I used for this. Um, so I said Helm charts allow you to configure various aspects of the uh, application, and um, that's actually defined in the chart itself. So the monocular chart defines uh, this different, these different configuration options for monocular itself. So the first one is the UI back and host name, um, which is basically just telling monocular, the UI component of the monocular where the API is. Um, and I have kind of a similar thing with the API here where I've configured it to allow requests from um, the monocular.local domain. So this is just setting up the, the two domain names I'm going to use. Um, but kind of more interestingly here, I have set up uh, some repos that I'm, I'm using with Monocular. So here, by default, you get the stable and incubator repositories. Um, but I've gone and added an extra one here, which is my, my to-do app, the, the to-do application that I was working on. And the repository for that is hosted here at, um, using GitHub pages. So you'll see this looks a lot like um, the output that you see from Helm repo list as well. So you can see um, the stable and incubator repositories here have uh, are pulling from Google Cloud, Google Cloud Storage. Um, but I have the monocular and the to-do repositories here pulling from my GitHub pages as well. So we'll just wait for this to start up. Um, okay, so the uh, the UI and the, uh, the UI and the pre-render service are running, but the the API is is starting up. So while that's doing that, I'll talk just briefly about the architecture of Monocular. So Monocular has a backend that's written in Go, um, and this is responsible for indexing chart repositories. So um, each of the repositories that you define, it will go and sp spin off a job every 15 minutes to go and fetch the index and fetch all the charts, um, and then it will go and process all that metadata and, and, and store that um, in Monocular. And it then exposes this via a JSON API that is used by the front end. Uh, so the front end will talk to the API um, via, this JSON, uh, via this RESTful JSON API and consume data that way. And then when you go and install a chart, um, Monocular will directly talk to Tiller for the chart deployment. Uh, so the front end is written, written in Angular 2, and um, it basically just talks to the, the back end to, to grab all the data. So hopefully, I have this running now. Nope. OK. So, so the API at the start has to go and fetch um, each of the repos and, and, and grab all the data. So it takes a couple minutes to start up. 
um, but it looks like that does not look good. Uh, the beauty of a live demo. Yeah, I've clearly offended the demo gods here. Well, hopefully um, that'll pick up. In the meantime, does anyone have any questions? There's a couple of questions in the chat, um, and um, and I think you've answered them, but I'm just going to repeat them. Uh, what kind of repository do you need for an internal chart repository? And is that what Monocular is, the actual repository, or is Monocular just the web UI on top of the registry? So Monocular is just the web UI on top of the, reg uh, the repository, and the repositories are um, they can they can be very simple. I can actually show you the one that I'm using for Monocular, actually. Um, so it it basically is um, any HTTP server that can have uh, that can host an index.yaml file, and then the actual packages of charts themselves. So if I look at the index.yaml file here, you can see it's just got um, metadata about the chart and where uh, the package for the chart is. So both the Helm client and Monocular will read this metadata and um, index the, the chart from there. I think that answered Jonathan's question. Let's see if the demo gods are smiling yet. Ah, we have something running. There you go. Let's see if we can access this. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, clearly, answering a question was the, the correct sacrifice to the demigods. Uh, OK, so we have the, the kind of, the, you've seen this before on, on cubeapps.com, and you have the pretty much the same thing running in cluster, but there's actually there's, there's an extra tab here, um, deployments. So this is where the in-cluster experience gets a bit interesting. So if I go over here to deployments, you can see what I've already installed in my cluster, and I have my monocular chart, which I just deployed, um, and also my to-do application, my jump PP cock is here as well. And I can go into this, and I can uh, see, again, similar to running Helm status, I can see uh, what resources have actually been installed. So there's a service here, and it shows me the, the external IP, um, and also the deployment as well. Uh, and I can go, right now I can only um, delete this deployment, but the plan is to add further actions, um, such as scaling out a deployment and um, uh, being, becoming more of a, a management over, over charts. Um, so if I go back here, I can search for my to-do chart, and I can also filter here by, by the repository, so I can be just what's in the stable repository or just the incubator repository or just what's in the to-do repository if I wanted to. So if I go back to the to-do chart here, you can see I have my readme and which explains how to go and install it. But over here on the left, instead of just seeing a helm install command, I actually get a button here where I can actually go and deploy this chart um, just from the UI. So if I go ahead and click this, I get a new deployment this time, uh, sorry, new release, this time called Innocent Sparrow. And eventually um, I get the same information about resources. So this time I'll go to this one. Once this is up and running, I should be able to access it. Um, but if I run Helm list here, you also see that I have the new Innocent Sparrow chart installed as well. So, so that's actually one of the nice things about Helm is that the because the the state of your applications are stored in the cluster, no matter who goes and installs a chart, whether it's uh, me running the Helm install command uh, here, or I do it on Monocular, or a coworker does it, 
you can all get the same state uh, just by querying the server in the same way that um, you can do with the Kubernetes API. Uh, so this still doesn't look like it's fired up. Or maybe my DNS is not working correctly. Uh, so it is running. Oh yeah. Um, and so Monocular by default will go and install things into the default namespace. Um, but again, another extension to that would be able to uh, pick the namespace that you want to go and install it in. So going back to my slides here, what's next for Monocular? Um, I think the biggest thing that we're, we're starting to think about now is authentication and authorization. So this would be, so right now, basically anyone who has access to my Monocular instance could go and install any chart they wish, uh, wish to. Um, so it'd be great to have a way to um, authenticate them either against the, the Kubernetes API or just within Monocular, Monocular itself. and um, and and have them have the right authorization to to be able to uh, install a chart. Um, there's also some catalog features which are particularly nice, I think, for the public version, the cubeapps.com. Um, so things like being able to rank charts and uh, rate them and uh, categorize them in uh, different categories so people can find things easier. Uh, for Helm deployment manager, management, I also, I did mention that you know there's some things that we can improve there. Uh, in terms of being able to customize the deployment and, and upgrade options. So when, when I installed the chart via the command line, I passed in some options via this config.yaml file. Um, so it'd be great if the, the UI could also allow you to enter some values before you go and in, install the chart. Um, it'd also be good to improve the releases information. I kind of had to copy out the external IP there, but it would be great if there was a link that just let me access my application. Um, there's also some kind of cool things we could do with third-party integrations, such as checking for uh, CVE checks. Um, so this would tell you if your uh, if the containers you're running have any CVE issues, and if there's an up upgrade available for that. Um, also, possibly integrating with something uh, like uh, Kubeless, so you can install functions as well as charts. Think some some things go well together, like the the Minio chart, which is a kind of like an S3 bucket store has uh, events that you can trigger and Kubeless can listen to those events and do particular things. So there can be some interesting integrations between the two. So a little bit on the Helm community, we have over 170 contributors, which is awesome. Um, it's almost two years old now. And uh, if you wanna get involved, we have a Slack channel on uh, in the Kubernetes Slack, uh, which is called Helm. Uh, actually, it's now called Helm Users and Helm Dev. And we have public dev meetings uh, Thursdays at 9.30 PT. So uh, what happens there is each maintainer, uh, sorry, the core maintainers go through a standup of uh, things that have been happening during the week. And then we open the floor to anyone who, uh, who has any questions or um, wants to discuss anything regarding Helm. And then we also have weekly updates and demos at the SIGAPS meetings, which are Mondays at 9 a.m. Um, so Helm is under the SIGAPS umbrella, uh, like charts and uh, monocular as well. So we often give updates uh, during those meetings on what's been going on. And finally, um, we are looking for contributors for monocular and uh, helping us take it to the next level. So if you're interested, you know, the, it's all open source at Kubernetes Helm slash monocular. Um, please check it out and, and help us out. Thank you very much. Cool. Well, thanks, Adnan. There's a couple of questions. Jonathan's been asking quite a few. Um, and so he asked the original one about the, the repository um, questions. Mm -hmm. um, cool. And, would you just clarify, would you install Helm on your host PC or in the VM running mini shift? And I think the beginning of the demo clarified that, but if you could just reiterate. Yeah, so you you could install um, Helm in in your mini shift uh, VM if you wanted to, but uh, I think typically people just install it on their, their home PC. And the way Helm communicates with uh, Tiller is through the kube config. So it will read your kube config, set up a um, 
a, a port forward to the, the tiller pod uh, and then com communicate over gRPC from there. And then there's another follow-up to that around security. Is there a security roles concern about using Helm on a shared cluster? Does it provide role-based access control on individual users, or is maybe that something you're working on? So yeah, that's actually something that we're definitely looking at in the Helm community as a whole. Um, so I think one of the blaring issues when it comes to security right now is that Tiller has, uh, again, cluster admin access and everything goes through Tiller right now. So um, there is no, Tiller doesn't really abide by um, role-based access control um, per user. So there's no way for you right now um, for you to install a chart as your user. Um, it'll always be installed as as Tiller's uh, global access. So, so we're definitely looking at figuring out how we can get um, Tiller to, to install things as the user in cube config. Uh, I think that's kind of the, the way that we're, we're looking at going about it, um, either via impersonating the user uh, or passing on the, the token for that user and, and setting up a Helm client and installing it. Um, there's, there's actually a great issue with uh, lots of uh, kind of back and forth comments on on that in the, uh, in the Helm issue queue. Um, I think it's, it's, I think it's called, uh, well, you can probably find it here. Uh, we've also actually, uh, we discussed it uh, in the last dev meeting. So if you're, if you are interested in um, asking about this, I think that's probably the best place to, to come on and ask about it and also share your ideas. Cause I think we still haven't figured out exactly how we want to um, get this working. So this is the issue I was talking about. It's 1918, um, and there's a great proposal here from Tamal, uh, but it goes on and there's a lot of back and forth discussion. So, but, but hopefully um, we'll reach some conclusion soon. And... Cool. And there's another question coming in um, on the to-do list. There was also a point about configuring deployments. There seems to be a lot of configuration in the demo deployments as shows. Um, how do people change these config values now um, before you're able to prompt for values? So, I, so there was a question about installing via Monocular or installing via the, the Helm command line. Let's see if I can, I'm gonna try and unmute um, Jonathan and ask him to ask the question directly. So if Jonathan can you jump in. Hey, can you hear me now? Absolutely, hey, yeah. yeah. Hey, thanks guys. I this is this is really exciting. I just I was um, curious because you kept showing uh, when you demoed Monocular itself and also the To Do app. There was a big list of configurations which I'm used to with with OpenShift templates about you know essentially things that turn into environment variables in the Docker containers mm -hmm. and and so it it sounded like on your To Do list was a way for for you to to allow users to configure those values before they deploy something. And I'm wondering how you're doing that now. Are you like changing them after the deployment or or how are you changing those config values if you don't have a way to prompt users to do that, either either in Monocular or in Helm? Yeah, so uh, so right now in Monocular, um, we basically installed a chart without any values. So generally that means that they pick up, uh, well, always that means um, they pick up the default values. So if I go to something like um, WordPress here again and take a look, at the take a look at the configuration here. Usually um, all charts will have good defaults so that it so that a simple you know helm install stable slash WordPress will work out of the box. Um, it's only sometimes uh, some more complex scenarios or where you're trying to do something more interesting um, where you actually want to go and change things. But for example, you know the the password here is a it's a random 10 character string. So that that's a that's an example of a good secure default. Um, other things here, like the, the email or the first name, these are all things that you can change within the application itself afterwards as well. Um, but so if I was to install this uh, with Monocular, it would just go and install it with all the defaults. Um, in the command line, I can obviously um, using, I just this here. Um, so you see there's this dash dash set flag. 
and this allows me to set each of these configuration um, uh, variables. There's also the values file, which is what I use with Monocular, which um, just allows me to provide a, a YAML file instead of um, having each one on the command line. Uh, but if I wanted to, for example, change the WordPress fast, I could do something like stable, uh, install stable slash WordPress, slash asset, WordPress, password equals, Hopefully that answered your question. That's great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have, have questions? I'll give it a few seconds here. I, I think it, it was a great introduction, um, both uh, to Helm and, and to the Monocular project. And um, I'd encourage everybody to take a look at, at both of those things and maybe attend one of the SIG meetings and listen in. Um, it sounds like there's a lot of good work going on and great ideas floating about um, in that space. So um, if you have the time, um, they definitely need the feedback and um, your input. So thanks Adnan for um, coming today and um, telling us about this and we look forward to um, another follow-up or two um, on um, other Helm related and package management related topics as well. So. It'll be interesting to see where all this goes in terms of the service catalog work and templates on OpenShift and how, you know, this. And so really kind of interesting to see this as this whole space evolves. Thank you, Diane. It was great to come on and, and show Helm and Monocular. All right. So um, this video, um, for those of you who are looking, um, and the slides, hopefully, um, we'll get Adnan to share them with me. And um, they'll all be up on blog.openshift.com. Um, in a day or so. So again, thank you for taking the time, Adnan, and um, we'll be looking forward to um, more, more from Bitnami and more from um, the Helm folks um, in the future. Sounds good. Thanks a lot.